Okay, so today we're going to look at how to make a mob splash. We're going to do this in After Effects with my airsoft gun. So let's first find a muzzle flash that we think will go good with this gun. Take in mind it's an M4, so it's going to have the four cornered one, or the fire's going to be let out the edges around the muzzle. One of these looks good, yeah, let's get that one. That one looks pretty good. Drag it in there. Now let's get it over to the right period of time. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, I'll just drag it over. Okay, now that we have it in, let's scale it up just a little until it looks proportional. You might want to go a little bigger. Matters what type of environment you're in. Now hit W to bring up the rotation tool and rotate it a little bit so it looks like it's parallel to the barrel. Now hit V again to go back to your selection tool. Change the blending mode to screen to make it blend better to the environment. Now hit T and lower the opacity so it looks more like it's in that type of environment it's not making such of a big impact so we don't have hard enough edge. Now as you see this shot is shot at a 45 degree angle so we also need one from the front to cope with the one from the side. So uh, one of these four corner ones looks good. I kind of like this one, yeah, let's go this one. Okay, and now let's drag it in there. So we've got that in. Hit beginning bracket, bring it to the current place in the timeline. Scale it up. Now you're going to want to hit toggle switches and modes if you're on this. Oh, first make a screen. Now toggle switches and modes and click that cube. That means 3D. Now we'll hit W to rotate it. That looks good. We're trying to make it look like it's correct, whatever you call it, proportion to the gun. I want some Z. Ah, there we go. Got the Z. Okay, now we're back to V. Move it around. Sit V. Um, we're going to want to lower the opacity. Just hit T. It brings up the opacity. I want this one a little lighter than the other one because this one's not going to be as extreme. Okay, now hit W, rotate it. Oh, wrong one. And you know what? Just forget about that. Eh, I think I can get it. Yeah, that one was a little off. Okay. Looks good. Pretty good. Could use some touching up. I'm gonna go in, you see it's two frames long. You normally want only one frame long unless you're shooting at like 60 frames per second. So we are going to move it forward. That did not work. Um, uh, I'm just gonna go back one, hit beginning bracket, and then go forward one, and hit all or option beginning bracket, or you can just drag the edges in. So now it's only one frame. I got this from the Action Essentials pack. You can get it from mainly anywhere. So now we're going to make an affected area, which is when the environment is lit up because of the muzzle flash. So we'll mask out the part where we think you'll be most affected. Probably right there. And let's go a little down. Somewhere around there. Yeah, this isn't the cleanest mask. This is quick. Let's do some little on me and the gun. To light up that stuff. Okay. So let's feather that. Gonna wanna feather the one on me just a little. Feather the other ones a lot more. The ones that are in the background are gonna be feathered. Those are closer to the gun are going to be feathered less. At this point, the background is farther away. Now you're going to hit T and bring down the opacity and go to Effect, Color Correction, Tint. And this is going to just change it up a little so it fits better with the color. Um, red doesn't look that good. Let's go down to an orange. 
Um, that goes pretty well. Okay, now we'll uh, shorten it. So we'll hit Option Beginning Bracket, then go to one frame over and hit Option End Bracket. Then we'll keyframe by hitting the stopwatch at whatever you like the opacity, and then we'll bring it all the way down to zero two frames later. So now we have a nice fade off. Fades off 50%. Looks pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Good start here. Getting good at this. No. But really, yeah. Okay, yeah. Lower that a little so you can see it through it better. Less of the color tint. You want it to look like a flame is casting light, but it's casting a bright light, but it's only for one frame and it's a very short amount of time. So it's not that big of a deal. But you wanna go slow. Do it right. Okay, now for smoke. Smoke. Yup, smoke. Action Essentials 2. I added some gun smoke, so I'll add some to the end of this video, just so you can get this one. Just add the same one. But you see, it's going to the left, which isn't going to work. So, we need to hit beginning bracket to bring it to the place in time. Now, as you can see, it's going the wrong way. I could rotate it, but I think it would be easier just to right click it, go to transform, flip horizontal. So we'll flip it, it'll mirror it horizontally. Now I'm soloing the muzzle flare and the smoke and turning off the transparency so I can see what it looks like. The important stuff. Um, there we go. Scale it up a little so it looks more, you want the smoke really big. You want a much bigger muzzle flash. Especially it's from a side angle. You can watch some videos of people shooting guns they have huge smoke clouds. They don't usually have a muzzle flash, but it just gives a cool effect. They usually do and if it's in a dark area or indoor area. But outside, you don't really see it much. But I'm just going to add it on this shot because, you know, it's like less lit. I don't know. Had the exposure up a while. Yeah, it looks good. Boom, that looks pretty good. Okay, so you can see it, I'll play one more time, that looks good. There, yeah. Okay, now for shells. Shells are very cool, except they have to be taken seriously. First, we need to find when its perspective is at the same of the gun place. And we see that little square there, that's where I'll put it. I'll hit W, rotate it until it's aligned with the gun, or parallel, if you prefer to say that. Doesn't really matter. Now we'll scale it down, hit V, and drag it right over there. That looks about good. Now, when the thing ejects, you're gonna wanna move it in time. So you don't move. Shells eject. So we'll keyframe the position where it is. You only want two keyframes. It's very important. It's much easier to edit. Go like three or four. And then we'll bring out the Z a lot. We'll bring up the Z up oh, wrong way. Let's bring up the Z a lot. Um Ooh, that looks good. And make it off the frame. Because if it wasn't off the frame, then you'd have to delete it the next frame. And then that last frame would not be motion blurred. Because we're about to motion blur. You can take that little circle thing, drag it up. That's optional. Especially on this shot, you can't really see the shell much. Boom. It's very simple. Might not want so much. It's a little extreme. That thing. Hmm. Eh, looks pretty good. Okay. 
So I'm gonna bring it down in Z so it looks like it changes a little more, shoots more forward, fits better. It looks kind of extreme. Think about it this way: you want it to look like the bullet is actually the size it is. Okay, now we'll hit the motion blur thing to enable motion blur, and then we'll hit the motion blur for the layer. If that isn't showed up, hit toggle switches and mode. I have both of them on, so yeah, I can't really see it. It's a little slow. But okay. Looks pretty good. Yeah, see? It's a little slow. So you can just drag it out or you can drag the keyframe closer to the other one. That looks good. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, now we're going to create a new black solid. Make sure it's black. It's very important. It's not black. Not a good thing. Okay, make it one frame long. One frame long. Only one. Get the mask tool. And you see where it ejects from. You want to look like that place is open. So we'll mask that out. Make it look darker so it looks like it's open. As you can see, looks like it's open. We'll feather like one or two. Yeah, more like 16. See, it turned down the opacity a little so it doesn't look too extreme. It's very subtle. You don't really see this. Now. We're going to go to muzzle flashes if you have action essentials. You get a suppressed muzzle flash. Yep, and once you are in the suppressed, let's, where are they? Okay, there's a suppress. Let's find one that's very subtle. Looks sort of like a spark. You could also use like couch hits. Some of sparks, you could use sparks. Wow, sparks for sparks. Yep, drag it in. Oh. Whoops, made a shape layer. Let's move that over. Let's bring it to the point in time first so we can see it. Yeah. Point in time. Boom. Hit the beginning bracket. Now, drag it in place. It's backwards. And hit W. Rotate it around. You could say flip horizontal. Rotating, I'm just more used to it. Make it look like there's a spark when the shell ejects. You want it all sparky and spark. Um, that looks good. Yeah, pretty good. Mm hmm. Turn up the opacity of that black because you don't see it as much behind this. Make this one frame long. Hit option or alt, beginning bracket, and then end bracket on the same frame. And you can see a little black splash. Let's put the black after it so you can see it better. Yeah. That looks good. Let's play one more time. There. Frame by frame looks good. Now. Or effect curves or color correction curves bring up the RGB so we can see the shell better it's very important to see the shell cause just gives it a better feel if you can actually see the effects you're doing and they fit well with the scene color it's a pretty bright scene so we're gonna want some good color correction to play it again just to look at it get that right I think it's good load it a little more. Now let's do reflections. These are not that big of a deal. They're good to do when there's like you're wearing sunglasses or there's like cars around. So I'm going to do it very simple. Create a new solid. Make it black. Yup. Effect. Um, I'm going to type in flare. And you could use optical flares, but since not everybody has that, that's another thing by Video Copilot. Just using a normal lens flare. Um, yeah, not that bright. Have it very subtle. <laughs> okay, screen it. 
Now we're going to want to hit the center and move it there. You can also just drag it over. Bring it way down until it looks like it's just glowing. That's the whole point. Make it look like there's a glow, like it's just like the flash. We'll add the glow later. Now, shorten it to one frame. Alt, beginning bracket, end bracket. Simple. Looks pretty good. Now hit Command D or Control D. Bring the lens flare over there. Now Control D again, and bring another lens flare there to all the places that look like might reflect. Um, doing one on my arm looks kind of bright. Yeah, looks good. It's very subtle, but it adds a good touch. It makes it look like it's affecting more with the environment and not just being added through VFX. So not all required, it just makes gives a little good touch. Now for glow, select the two muzzle flashes. We'll just do one at a time actually. Effect, stylize, glow. Now go to behind, change it to on top because we want the original. We want a good image of the muzzle flash because that's important. Now crank up yeah, that's good. Crank up the radius a bunch. Yeah, see? Makes a big difference. Well, makes a little difference. That is a big difference. Go stylize glow for the other one. Other muscle flash. Crank up the radius. Crank down the threshold. Just play around with it, see what looks best. Change it to on top again so we still have that original good look of the muscle flash. Turn down the opacity again because I think the glow made it a little bright. Here's the final shot. Okay, okay ready? Mm -hmm.